So we got up early this morning, we've traveled north, the sunshine's beating down on us, Joe. Sure is. We're gonna produce a two-part video series looking at the installation behind us. What yeah. are we actually gonna be looking at, Joe? Well, we think we're looking at an electrical installation here that is gonna become not just standard in the future, but possibly even commonplace. Because in the first part of the video, we're gonna be looking at solar PV generation. Now, obviously that ties in really nicely with the other kind of buzzword in the industry at the moment, which is electric vehicles, isn't it? Because what do we think most people are going to end up doing on their properties, Gary? Yeah, so you get yourself an electric vehicle, you're probably going to install solar PV, but the problem being you're going to drive your car off maybe to go to work when the sun shines out and yep. therefore the energy is being produced. So it's going to encompass the need for some sort of storage system. The installation behind us has both. It has solar PV and it has DC storage. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. I think with the size of the loft hatch, Joe, I think you're going to be plumping forward for the <laughs> solar PV. And I'll concentrate on perhaps in my video looking at the DC storage. Absolutely. So we're going to have a look. Let's do it. So we've come into the relative uh, warmth of the loft space now here, yeah. <laughs> and it's a real pleasure to have Sam yeah, Featherstone here of Oval Electrical Services, uh, soon to be Oval Renewables. Renewables. So that's something to look forward to, that name change, we'll keep an eye out for that. Yeah. So what we've come up into the loft space to talk about is a little bit more about the solar PV situation that we've got going on here. So how many panels have we got on the roof outside here? So we've got 13 on um, this, this face here, mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got seven on the south face just there. Right, okay, and what, what sort of orientation have we got over uh, here? That is the east face. East face, right, yeah. okay. So again, the optimum is south, isn't it? That's it really is, where yeah. we want the solar panels to be. But obviously we've got to work within the confines of, yeah, of the property. That's right, yeah. yeah. So they're all out on the roof, generating lots of electricity for us. And what's quite interesting is that even on a day like this, when we check the power uh, consumption, or the power generation, I should say earlier, yeah. uh, what was the, the generation? Um, it's, a, it's around 300 watts, three, 300, yeah. 350, something like that. Yeah. So and that, uh, that to me is amazing good. because there's no sunshine out there today. It's, yeah. it's completely it's overcast yeah. but it's still generating some electricity yeah. which is which is just phenomenal yeah. and overall what's the sort of the the power generation rating of all the pv installations yeah so all, all the panels um they add up to about 5700 watts okay so 5.7 kilowatts yeah um so there's a good chunk of power there that can be generated if everything was the best conditions right um, fantastic sunniest conditions that we could get so if we were here in the middle of summer we'd be seeing a lot more power being a lot more power yeah. yeah yeah fantastic yeah now it's very interesting because uh, most electricians know about the solar panels on the roof on the outside but it's when we get inside <laughs> that yeah. it starts to get a little bit trickier yeah. so could you just talk me through the kit that we've got going on here sam yeah of course yeah so the first thing i suppose to mention is um we we always put the, the inside electrics on um, a, a fireproof board. Oh, okay. So in this case, it's a, a concrete board. Yeah. Um, that's basically just to make sure that if there's any heat um, mm -hmm. from the inverter or any other equipment that we might install on the on the wall to, to as part of the system, yeah. uh, it doesn't affect any uh, any wood that's behind it or anything like that and, and it sort of negates a fire risk. Yeah. Um, this, it wouldn't have mattered, but mm -hmm. the reason we've put it on, on here um, yeah. is just for neatness really it just yeah. makes it makes it neat and and tidy but if this was for example like a side of a barn or something like that if we yeah. put it on this concrete board it means that if there's any heat from the back of the inverter there's no risk that that, that, that wood back will, yeah. will catch fire so yeah, um, yeah it, it's just for neatness and for, for fire safety yeah. really that's really good I yeah. love people who go the extra mile so having the concrete board on the non-flammable surface for me is just it just yeah. shows that quality that it's, you're, it's nice. you're committed to here Sam so that's yeah. great so we bring the, uh, the the cables in. What's 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 happening next? Yeah. Time? So we've, if we start with the the panel the panel uh, wiring. Yep. So we've got from the from this front roof here. We've got yep. um, two cables that come out. One comes into this the DC isolator here. Okay. Um, and then that then comes back out, and it's a little bit like a, a socket ring. Yeah. It's just positive to negative, and it's just like a ring circuit. Yeah. So the first leg goes out to the front roof, and yep. then the the last leg goes out to the south roof and then it all just links in um, right. in between. So these single cables here, yeah. these are actually, these are single cores, are they? They are, yeah. Right, yeah. okay, so we've got a positive and a negative That's uh, right. coming back. And so that means then, uh, if, I, if I know my electrical wiring, that means that the solar panels are actually wired in series with yeah, each other. That's right, yeah. All oh, right, that's interesting. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll circle back around to that later because yeah. that's quite an important point. Yeah, out and of then, the yeah so, out, so we've got the DC isolator here and mm -hmm. then out of there is just a positive and negative feed into the uh, this solar edge inverter. Right. Here. So that, that's what delivers the, the power from the panels yep. and gives uh, gives the, the solar edge inverter something to work with, mm -hmm. uh, basically. So then we've we've got on the so that's like the DC side of the system. Yeah. 
on the AC side of the system, I always like to imagine it like half of the inverter. So this is like mm -hmm. AC and this is DC. Yeah. We've got the um, the cable that comes down from the uh, fuse board downstairs, which okay. was the original cable on in, in this scenario, because it's mm -hmm. a, an upgrade. We've then got a, a 20 amp rotary AC isolator here mm -hmm. to, to isolate the AC side of the system if we ever need to do any maintenance. Yep. Um, and then we've got a, a flex that comes out to, to um, supply or give the inverter a route to send right. its inverted power back down right. um, to the fuse board downstairs. So we get DC coming from the solar panels out yep. on the roof, the, the solar PV. That goes through the inverter, the inverter changes it into AC, yep. and then it goes out of the AC inverter and down and it connects into the mains via this cable here, exactly it, which yeah. is where the power yep. goes out effectively. Yeah. Mm, fantastic. Yep. So it's good to see two isolators, because obviously if we need to work on this panel, we need to remove it from all exactly. sources, don't we? Exactly, yeah, yeah that's why we've got sure. this dual supply here, just yeah. to, to make sure someone's aware of it. Absolutely um, brilliant. So yeah, and then last thing I suppose to, to mention is the uh, we've got hardwired um, internet connection into the inverter to allow yep. us and the customer to monitor what's happening uh, remotely. Oh, uh, and Solar Edge as well, if there ever was a, a problem with the system or the customer wasn't sure, we can just give Solar Edge the uh, serial number, they yep. can log on yep. and, and say, yeah, this is the problem, or you know, or I can do that as well. So it oh, just gives, um, tries to get rid of the need to come out to site all the time. Um, oh, so, so yeah, that's the, there's not much to it to be honest. Yeah. It's just a clever piece of kit. It is really good. So you said this was a, an, an upgraded system. So yeah. the the Solar Edge uh, inverter there. What what are some of the kind of benefits of having the the Solar Edge inverter there instead so, of some other cheaper brands? Maybe? Yeah. So so originally this had um, what we now class as like a, a dumb solar system. Right. So the customer didn't know what each panel was um, producing. Yeah. Uh, all they knew is that they had an output of say two kilowatts or right. you know whatever. Whereas th this solar edge system allows the customer to monitor each individual panel oh, so wow. um, it, it means that if one panel goes down um, then they can see which panel it is on the roof so right. it makes our job easier if you have to replace a panel or anything like that but it also increases the efficiency of the full set of panels Wow! Um, and it, it basically does that because each panel um, is still wired in, in like a series way but mm -hmm. in the back of each on the back of each panel there's a little solar edge optimizer box okay they all link together, yeah. um, so they're actually the circuit that, that delivers the power back to back to here. But yeah. the panels plug into each. There's one box per panel, so oh, it means right. that if you have a faulty panel, or if you had a, a situation where there was a chimney that caused shading on a few panels on the old system that was in, like the dumb system that we right. now call, that would um, that would reduce the overall consumption of all of the panels. Yeah. Uh, so not just the ones that were shaded, but the the full set of panels. Whereas right. this system would just whatever panel was shaded, it would reduce the the output of that panel because it's not getting as much light. But the rest of them would be free to generate as much as possible, which okay. obviously increases how much power the, yeah. the full system generates yeah. um, all the time. So that's really clever. So because because they're wired in series, if if we think about loads that are wired in series, if you lose one of the loads, you lose the whole string of, yeah. of loads, don't that's you? And the same with the, with yeah. the with the solar panels because they're wired in series. If yeah. one of the panels stops working you can effectively that box kind of it almost like bypasses that panel yeah it does it, yeah. it allows that panel to be bypassed so it yeah. doesn't bring the overall efficiency of everything down yeah. it just it just lets that panel be shaded for a little bit and then yeah. um if you know then the sun obviously moves around it maybe uh, causes shading on some other panels and lets that you know gives that panel light again um that'll start generating and the ones that are now shaded yeah. uh, reducing in power but the rest of them carry on generating as, 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 as good as they are. So. And we, we saw as well earlier, you showed me that if you, you can log on to, uh, is it Solar Edge? Is Solar Edge, like yep. the portal, yeah, yep. your monitoring portal. And yeah. you can actually see what each individual solar panel exactly. is generating yeah. at any given time and yeah. cumulative effects as well. Yeah. That's really good. So yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's quite important for people nowadays, isn't it? That, yeah. you know, when they, when they have these uh, systems installed, it's really nice to be able to break it down and see how it's actually performing on a, on a you know, an hourly basis. Almost, it's, yeah. an, it's an investment, this sort of stuff, and yeah. you want to make sure that that you produce as much as possible. So yeah. if you have a panel that's maybe still working but isn't working as it should be under its warranty, yeah. um, you can actually take data from uh, the Solar Edge portal and yeah. use that to uh, claim on panel warranties, which oh, is very right. hard to do with the dumb system because you have no way of, of knowing what each panel is, is producing itself sure. on, on its own. Yeah. So um, for me, that's another great point because if you have a big commercial setting where you've got thousands of panels, yeah. 
um, you know, the person that's in charge of looking after that can just log on yeah. and go, ah, oh, panel 921 yeah. is, has died completely. And then, you know, their on-site maintenance team or someone like ourselves can just go walk straight to that panel, mm. unplug it, put a new one in, check the monitoring portal and it's all back up and working right. rather than having to test the full lot to try and yeah. find out. So even the cost saving on that side for maintenance work is, yeah. is great and that's why we love the solar edge system. So it very soon pay for itself, wouldn't it? Which yeah, is fantastic. That's yeah, it, I think, yeah. I think you told me off camera earlier about a, a, a chap who you did an upgrade for him. Yeah. Found some three of his panels were were not effectively not functioning, weren't they? Or right, much yeah. reduced rate. And so by swapping those out you actually brought a system back up to, yeah. to full well, energy. The, the solar edge portal allowed us to actually see the input from the panel into this little box, yeah. the voltage that was coming into this little box, which has meant that um, we can actually take like a, a screen grab of the of the graph yeah. and we can actually see that the, the voltage in that case from the three panels that were at fault was only around 17 volts, yeah. whereas the rest were up at near 30, 32, something like that. So that in itself, they're all in the same orientation, no shading or anything. Yeah. So there's no reason why those three panels shouldn't be producing the same as what uh, the rest of them are. Yeah. But the um, the fact that it was delivering um, 17 volts into the optimizer said, there you go, that's all the information you need. Wow. The, the panel has obviously got some blown diodes. So you wouldn't have known that yeah. because you just, you, just by looking at the inverter, everything yeah. looks fine, yeah. and it is still generating, but it's generating yeah. sort of like a third of what of what yeah. the rest of them are. So, and I suppose on a dumb system, all you're seeing is just the total output. You look at that and think it's okay. You know, maybe it's not as sunny as I thought it was. Yeah. You know, there's there's so many factors that change it. Hundred percent. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, how much solar PV generation have we got on the roof outside the building? So, the total amount of installed solar yeah. is 5.7 kilowatts. Right, okay. But my understanding is, is that this inverter can only discharge 3.68 kilowatts that's into right, the yeah. system, and that's that's yeah. a, a DNO regulatory thing, it isn't is, it? It is, yeah. 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 So, why is it then we, we've kind of got the potential to generate more than we can actually discharge into the system? It's, it's all about um, making sure that we're producing the most uh, power at the dullest times. Right. So uh, in the mornings and the evenings, um, and even just all throughout winter, yeah. because it's obviously the solar, uh, the sun isn't you know as, as strong as it is in in summer, and you don't have the long right. days. So the more solar PV uh, you install, pan, you know, panel wise, mm -hmm. um, the more power that this inverter is getting from the right. panels, um, and it can then try and get it up to its 3.68 right. kilowatt limit. Got but, you. Um, in winter, you, you're probably not getting up to that limit, but yeah. with having 5.7 kilowatts of, of solar PV installed, yeah. it means you're producing more at the duller times. Right. So if we only put 3.68 kilowatts on the outside of the building, yeah. then we're actually would be producing much less during the, the duller yeah. periods. If, if, that, if, if you had the perfect conditions yeah. and the panels were producing 3.68, yeah. then this would be producing 3.68. Right. But that is very rare that you yeah. get, you know, perfect sunlight, it's hitting the panels direct, you know, really good orientation it just doesn't happen so by overloading the uh, well not really overloading but, but putting more panels onto the inverter than than um, it can actually discharge it means that we, we get a higher yield annu right. annually because there's more power at those duller times yeah um, with these inverters you, the most amount of panels you can install is 5.7 kilowatt right. that's what's been tested to that right. can handle if if, exactly. if it was the perfect conditions um, and the panels were put in you know 5.7 kilowatts mm -hmm. up to the inverter yeah the inverter can handle that excess power right. and the inverter sort of bottlenecks that power then down to 3.68 but ah, that's, that's very clever. rare that it gets up to that 5.7 yeah. kilowatt um, oh, that's threshold. really clever so, so you're really maximizing the efficiency of the production of the system aren't yeah. you? you're trying to get it to produce as much as you can as, as much around the year as you possibly That's can. It. Yeah. yeah, what yeah. a really clever system. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for talking to us today, yeah, and thank you for taking some of the mystery yeah. out of solar PV <laughs> generation. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. So we've seen some absolutely fascinating aspects of solar PV generation in this video, but what we'd encourage you to do is to look out for the second part of this video, where we look at what happens to the electricity after it's passed through the inverter and gone down into the house. So we'll see what happens, how it gets stored, how that can be used, and how it can also be used to charge our electric vehicles. So thank you very much indeed for watching.